It's my distinct pleasure to introduce this morning's keynote speaker, Major General Gwen Bingham, Commanding General, U.S. Army TACOM Life Cycle Management Command. Major General Gwen Bingham assumed command of the U.S. Army TACOM's Life Cycle Management Command in June of 2014. She was promoted to Major General in November of 2013. Major General is a native of Troy, Alabama. She graduated with a general business degree and is an Army ROTC Distinguished Military graduate from the University of Alabama in 1981. For those of us that are Michigan State grads, we will not hold that against her. <laughs> she was commissioned second lieutenant in the Quartermaster Corps, and she holds master's degrees from Central Michigan University and the National Defense University. Her military schooling includes the Quartermaster, Officer Basic and Advanced Courses, Combined Arms and Services Staff School, Army Command and General Staff College, the Army Inspector General Course, and the Major General and the Industrial College of the Armed Forces. Major General Bingham has served in a myriad of staff and leadership positions throughout her career from platoon leader to two-star commander. She has deployed in support of Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom and has served in assignments both in the contiguous United States and overseas. Major General Bingham served as the 51st Quartermaster General of the United States Army and commandment of the U.S. Army Quartermaster School in Fort Lee, Virginia. Major General Bingham is the recipient of numerous military awards including the Distinguished Service Medal, Defense Superior Service Medal, Legion of Merit, Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, Joint Service Commendation Medal, Army Commendation Medal, and Army Achievement Medal, and numerous campaign and service medals. She was presented the 2013 Strong Men and Women in Virginia History Award, the 2013 Wise Woman Award, named 2013 Mover and Shaker, presented the El Paso Chapter Lynx Incorporated 2014 Star Award. The Southwest Women's Law Center 2014 Celebrating Women's Stories Award. She's also received the Women of Color STEM Award in 2014 and the 2014 Rock of the Year Award for her community and civic contributions. General Bingham is married to Dr. Patrick Bingham and they have two adult children, Tava Michelle and Philip Jamal. Ladies and gentlemen, please extend a warm welcome to General, Major General Gwen Bingham, and let's offer her our sincere thanks for her outstanding service to our country. Well, good morning, everyone. Feeling good? I really enjoyed that panel. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations. Let's give our panelists another round of applause. Thank you ladies for doing such a wonderful job for us. I want to thank Ms. Blair for that very kind introduction. Uh, yesterday I was speaking at a Women's History Month and uh, the person who introduced me read a more lengthier bio and uh, it took me back to a place uh, at uh, El Paso in the airport I was traveling and I met a lieutenant who was also traveling in uniform, so we cranked up a conversation and eventually the lieutenant said to me, he says, General, if I might ask you, how long have you been in the service? And I don't know why, but I felt so proud and I stood up or sat up a little higher and stuck out my chest and said, 32 years and counting, lieutenant, and this was two years ago. The lieutenant got this strange look on his face and he rubbed his forehead and he says, wow, ma'am. He says, I had a birthday about a month ago when I turned 31. He says, ma'am, you've been in the Army longer than I've been alive. So um, I just told him, well, lieutenant, just keep living. You'll get there soon enough. I want to uh, say uh, good morning to everyone and to say thank you for having me here for this wonderful uh, program celebration uh, today. As the commanding general just right down the road of the Tank Automotive and Armaments Life Cycle Management Command, uh, stepped here about two years ago now, and I was so enamored with what we had around us. And in point of fact, TACOM was brought here in 1941 by a different name. We were stood up here to take advantage of the synergy between the military and the automobile industry. 
And so for the ladies on the panel who are in the big business that talk about that, we definitely have a kinship to you because that's what we do in the Tank Automotive and Armaments Command, among many things, is to manage and oversee the ground combat systems, the soldier support systems uh, for the Army at large. And if you did know, TACOM is the subordinate headquarters of the Army Materiel Command. We're about 7,500 people strong here in Warren, Michigan, but about 19,000 people throughout our life cycle uh, management command around the globe. So we're very proud to be here. And I'm very excited about the subject, uh, the STEManistas project. Matter of fact, I, I want to be a STEManista. It's just kind of cool. Uh, who do we have in the audience today? Any STEManistas out there? If you're a STEManista, stand up and let us recognize you. Stand up, STEManistas. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for your many contributions. We couldn't do what we do inside our gates um, at TACOM without the full support and partnership of all of you outside our gates. And to our panelists who were talking about 25% of our women who are in STEM um, programs, I will tell you in the military, we absolutely count on STEM. We are an organization that's made up of acquisition professionals, logisticians, uh, STEM professionals, research and development professionals, manufacturers, we couldn't do our business without STEM. And so STEM for us indeed is very, very important as well. I will tell you that for the young people in the audience and those who are listening, truly the sky is the limit. Yesterday at a Women's History Month program, we were celebrating all the magnanimous contributions that women have made throughout our nation's history. And the month of March is Women's History Month in our military. And I remember talking about women from A to Z. In the first letter of the alphabet, A, I called off Assistant Secretary of the Army, is a woman in the Army, Secretary the Honorable Catherine T. Hammock. And you know what her profession is? Anyone want to hazard a guess? She's an engineer. She's an engineer. And so one of my pieces of advice for all of our young people is to never say never. Because I was one of those persons now 34 years ago who believed that when I came into the Army on a four-year Army ROTC scholarship, I would do four years and not a day longer. That's all. I had a business management degree, as was said, at the University of Alabama. My father had a small business in photography, and I thought I would do my four-year commitment, get out, and go into the business world. But it never quite worked out that way because I fell in love, not only with the man I married almost 33 years ago now, but I fell in love with this vocation called the United States Army. What I'm telling you is that uh, never say never, because you might deprive yourself of an opportunity to do that which you want to do. So that would probably be my first message in life. About 60 other women uh, are general officers in the Army today. Uh, that's the active component, uh, U.S. Army Reserves and the Army National Guard. And I will tell you a significant number of those 60 women are in STEM majors and disciplines and jobs. And so it's exciting to see all of what is happening out, not only in our military, but within our government and other occupations. As I mentioned, women from A to Z, for every letter of the alphabet, you could find a woman who is employed gamefully doing what is great about our nation. And I think when you talk, talk about diversion or diversity, inclusion, and equality, that's really another reason why I stayed in the military, because I felt that while we are not perfect, we are certainly striving in that direction, and it allows us the opportunity to be able to be that which we want to be. Just in the last year alone, if you were following the news, you know that the Department of Defense has opened up all of its military occupational specialties to women. We had two females to complete the, the coveted Ranger School in the last year. And we had the promotion of our first Army three African-American woman to the rank of three-star who now serves as our Army Surgeon General. So again, young people in the audience, never say never. Dream and dream big. 
Never let someone tell you what you can and cannot achieve. That would be a falsity. So never go there. And that's one of the things that I most like to talk about. I think our nation, and certainly in this community, we, we've been excited to be here, has some of the best and brightest youth in the world. Who agrees with me? Some of the best and brightest youth are in the world. And I never worry about our future. I never worry about the future of the Army that I'm in love with as a vocation in my own occupation, because I can look out into any audience, and I can see young people who are excited about the world that they live in. And someone said that people, young people, will be modeling what they see. Each and every one of us have an opportunity to be a role model. In that same forum yesterday, there was a group of folks that I too wanted to say thank you to. And you knew who it was? It was the men. Because I would not be standing here were it not for my own parents, my mom and dad, but my husband of 32 years, I wouldn't be standing here wearing two stars on my shoulders without his love and support of me. And in point of fact, because women make up about 14 and a half percent of the active component, most of our teammates are men. So I appreciate the men and I would say, let's give our men a round of applause for supporting us and uh, helping us and encouraging us along the way. I absolutely applaud programs like this. Uh, when I walked into this beautiful facility, I wanted to be a kid again. It's just beautiful, it's intriguing, it's exciting, and it's one way of being able to reach out to our young people and just excite them about the possibilities, the possibilities of service, the possibilities of making a positive difference for your community of practice, for your nation, and for your family. There's so many things out there, and uh, I'm just excited to be one among you that believes in people following their dreams, our young people following their dreams, never giving up, and always be steadfast and focused on the possibilities. So I would just say that to all of those who are out there who are interested in a community and a vocation in science, technology, engineering, and math. We in the military, we would love to bring you on with us. Uh, you don't have to have on or wear a uniform. You can be a Department of Defense civilian. We have many of them. In point of fact, within my own organization, uh, the military makes up about 200 of the 7,500 that we have locally here. So most of them are Department of Defense civilians. Uh, Army Materiel Command, our commanding general is General Dennis Vi. He has uh, initiated a program called AMC 1000 Interns. And so we are inviting 1,000 interns to join the Army's ranks every year for the next five years. And uh, so far we have made our goal each and every single year. So thank you again for having me here on your program. I'm delighted to be here. Dream, dream big, and follow your dreams. And don't let anyone steal your joy or those dreams. Thank you very much.